Hello, my name is Dermot, and today I'm going to show you how to use shaft encoders in your autonomous program. The first thing we want to do is hit New Competition Project, Time Competition Project, 15 Second Autonomous, and 135 Second Operator Control. Your screen should look like mine. If not, just hit the main tab on top. First thing we want to do is add our encoder variables. We're going to double click globals they're going to be long and it, they're going to be called encoder one with a value of zero another long encoder two with the value of zero the first thing we're, we're going to do is create an a function called encoder start uh, this will basically start the encoder so you won't have to do it for every encoder such as a left, a right, a forward, and a backwards. We're going to right click, add new function. This is going to be encoder forward start, actually. We're going to open inputs. We're going to click on optical quad encoder and drag it out. We're going to start it. My encoder one is in ports one and two, and the inward direction is zero because it is not inverted and I'm going to do that one more time for ports 3 and 4 and it is not inverted for my robot once we have done that I'm just going to close encoder start I'm going to right click on user functions once again and I'm going to add a new function this is going to be encoder forward Once we have done that, I'm going to bring out an optical quad encoder. We're going to preset it. We're going to preset encoder 1 first to 0. We're going to do that one more time with encoder 2 and preset it to 0. Once we have done that, I'm going to hit program flow and bring out a while loop. Now for this while loop my parameter is going to be while encoder 1 is less than 360 and encoder 2 is also less than 360. Now this parameter is true because encoder 1 is currently 0 and we set preset it to zero right here when we preset it it was to zero so this part is true and encoder 2 is less than 360 and this is also true because we also preset encoder 2 to zero so what this means is they're both starting at zero and they'll both move forward until one of them hits 360 one, as soon as one of them hits 360 this parameter will no longer be true and it will move out the while loop and it will go on to the next assigned task. Once we've done that, we're going to close program flow. We're going to drag out an optical quad encoder. We're going to get. This will be receiving information from the encoder. From encoder 1, again, ports 1 and 2. We're going to do that one more time. Get from encoder 3 and 4 this time. From ports 3 and 4 and then this is encoder 2 once we have done that we're going to close inputs we're going to open up outputs and motor module drag out motor module and my I have four motors which are plugged into ports 1, 2, 9 and 10 so this is a forward so my motors 1 and 2 will be going positive to go forward my motors 9 and 10 will actually be going negative and what this means is my motors mo motors 1 and 2 will be going clockwise to be moving forward and my motors 9 and 10 will be going counterclockwise motor 10 once we have done that we're going to 
drag out another motor module outside the while loop and this is going to be a stop for motors one two nine and ten and this is a basic encoder forward and this encoder forward will move one full rotation 360 ticks and if you want it to move more all you have to do is click on the while loop and change the 360 to any designated value like I have gone ahead and made an encoder right, an encoder left, and an encoder backwards. And I'm going to show you how they work. I'm going to start off with the encoder right. Now, everything is the same except I just had to change my parameter and my motor values. And yours, your motor values might be different, and your parameter could be a little different, but mine is encoder 1, which is on the left side, it is less than 360 and encoder 2 which is on the right side is greater than negative 360 now this is true since I am turning right my encoder left uh, one on the left side will be moving forward until it hits 360 and that is true because zero encoder 1 is currently preset to zero and zero is less than 360 so this side is true and encoder 2 is greater than negative 360 now this is true also because 0 is greater than negative 360 now my encoder 2 on the right side will be moving backwards until it hits 360 so as soon as one of these hits 360 it's gonna come out the parameter and it's no longer gonna be true and it's gonna move on to the next task next I want to show you encoder left once again I had to change my motor values up and you might have to also and for my parameter this is encoder 1 is greater than negative 360 and encoder 2 is less than 360 now this is true encoder 1 is greater than negative 360 because it is preset to 0 and 0 is once again and always will be greater than negative 360 and encoder 2 is less than 360 now this is true because 0 is less than 360 and always will be less than 360 now for my encoder 1 on the left side it's going to be moving backwards into the negatives so as soon as it hits negative 360 it's going to stop or as soon as my encoder 2 on the right side moving forward hits 360 it is going to stop so once again as soon as one of these encoder 1 or what encoder 2 become false it's the while loop is no longer good because the parameter is false and it's going to move on to the next function and encoder backwards now my motor values were the opposite of encoder forward in my while loop while encoder 1 is greater than negative 360 and encoder 2 is greater than negative 360 this is true since both are preset to zero and zero is always going to be greater than negative 360 now since I'm going backwards my uh, values will be in the negatives so as so they will be going backwards from zero all the way to negative 360 so as soon as encoder 1 or encoder 2 reaches negative 360 it's going to the parameter is going to become false and it's going to come out the while loop and go to the next task if assigned. Now that is it for building a basic autonomous program using encoders. Thank you for watching. Please continue watching for part 3. Now that we have made our encoder functions, we're going to use this in autonomous mode. We're going to click the autonomous tab right here. 
the first thing we're going to do is bring out an encoder start now what this is doing is this is basically starting the encoders next right under program flow we're going to bring out a wait time for one second we're going to bring an encoder forward now this encoder forward will go a one full shaft rotation encoder another wait time for one second we're going to have an encoder back we're going to add one more wait time after this encoder right another wait time encoder left and just one final wait time now what now this program it's going to start the encoder it's going to go forward one full shaft rotation once that is done it's going to wait one second and go back one full shaft rotation it's going to wait one second it's going to turn right until one full shaft rotation has been met from either left side or right side wait one second and then turn left until one full shaft rotation has been met either from the left side or the right side and then wait one second and the program is going to stop right here because there's no further command after this wait right here thank you for watching